Hello YouTube and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be retouching this image. Before I go ahead, let me um, give credit to Andre Designs. He's um, a Jamaican photographer. So I came across this image once when I was going through his YouTube tutorial. So I had to um, ask for his permission to make a video on this and he gave me the go ahead. So thank you Andre Designs. You could check him out on YouTube and on Instagram too. Yes, and um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And um, don't forget to click on the notification button so you would see my updates when I do. So, yeah, um, let's go ahead and um, retype this photo. So, before I um, begin to retouch, what I normally do is I make sure I crop my image to the size that I want and to do this I just go to my crop tool which is here then I select the, um, the size that I want normally I prefer to use 4x5 which is the portrait mode for Instagram and um, most of my images are posted on Instagram, so I basically use this um, this settings for my image. So what I'll do is I would um, crop this right, just like this. Then um, I think I want to see most of the um, half fingers, so I'll just crop this in a bit. Yep, I think this this is good. I just click enter. And I'll do nothing. Yep, this looks cool. I think, yeah. So um, when I'm done cropping, what I do is I normally change my bits to sixteen. Well, I do that because 16 bit gives your image that wider range of colors. So, whilst editing, you see more colors pop out in your um, in your image. So, what I do before I start to retouch is I change the bit of the image to 16. And to do that, I'll just go to my image, then come to mode, and change it to 16 bit channel. Yep. This would not have any um, serious effect on your image. It, it just gives 16 bit has a wider range of colors, and I think it just makes it mostly prevent bands in images. That's another topic for another day I would do. But then let's just go ahead with retouch. So, yeah, after doing that, um, <clears throat> what I normally do is I would duplicate this layer. On, um, on a PC, you could just press Ctrl J to duplicate the layer. So after duplicating my layer, now before I start to retouch, another thing I do is I make sure I um, remove as much blemishes as possible. I just try to remove the blemishes that are very visible. So I do that to prevent um, any unwanted situations later on so before i start i make sure after duplicating i make sure i um remove as many blemishes as possible so and to do that now there are so many ways of removing blemishes you could use the healing brush tool you could use the clone stamp tool but mostly i prefer using the healing brush tool so i'll just um select my healing brush tool then I would increase the size a bit and I'll already zoom it into my image and then I'll just um, go ahead and remove some blemishes just like this so this sometimes will take a bit of time but it's worth it 
Just remove as much as you can. You don't have to remove all. Just take out as much as possible. Well, pals, I'm doing this. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to tell other people about it. <coughs> so that if i am um, upload more videos you will see them yep i think this is okay i'm done removing my blemishes so what i'll do next is um yes now i'm going to create my frequency separation layers so what i'll do is i would duplicate this layer again then after duplicating this layer, I would um, <coughs> rename this layer. Yes, um, double click on it. Then I rename it to low frequency. Then I'll name the upper one, change it to high frequency. Just like this. Now you don't have to um, name it the same way, but then I just prefer using high and low frequency. You could use your own words that will make you more comfortable. But then this is how I learned, so I <laughs> I stuck to it. Yep. So after um, naming these, what I would do is I would um, turn this layer off. Then. While selecting my low frequency, I would come to filter, blur, caution blur. <clears throat> now, um, this is one of the most important parts when it comes to um, retouching. So, if if you are retouching um, a very close-up photo, especially headshots and portraits, if you want to maintain details of your photo it's always advisable to select a radius that is high mostly from most of my images that you see on instagram i i select the range i use is mostly between 10 to 20. Now these these figures between 10 to 20 gives me a very 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 um detailed image when i'm doing my retouch mostly if i'm mostly if i'm retouching headshots and then portraits i go with 10 12 15 mostly it's between 10 to 15 but sometimes i could go higher to 20 just because i want to have this detail in my image i want to maintain skin texture and everything so yep so um but then how to do this just make sure you move it so you do not see any blemish. No, this is too much. I think I will go for go for thirteen. Yeah, I think thirteen will do. Press OK. Now after um this, I would turn my high frequency on and select my high frequency then I come to image and apply image now at this point I want to apply this high frequency image this high frequency layer to my low frequency layer so I'll come to layer then I'll select low frequency then I will change the blending board to subtract Yep, then I leave my scale at 2, then I'll leave offset at 128. And these are um, standard figures that you should use all the time. Scale is always at 2, offset is always at 128, and your blending mode should always be subtract. Yep, so um, my pen is my OK. So after this, I change my blending mode of the high frequency to linear light. Yep, and at this point you see that your image comes back to its normal um, 
it's true okay so let me just turn this off turn it off still see that image is still the same so yes at this point um <clears throat> this way we are going to start brushing on our image to um to even out the skin so um some people would at this point use the laser tool to even out the skin others would use a normal brush tool but then i prefer using the mixer brush tool now why do i use the mixer brush tool i use the mixer brush tool because um let me just select the mixer brush tool now in uh, photoshop cc 2018 you would find your mixer brush tool here just if you don't find it just right click here then you see the option just say true and you will find it here select your mixer brush tool now with the mixer brush tool what it does is let me just zoom it in a bit so what the mixer brush tool does is now if i increase my brush now what it does is that once you're brushing through it separates the colors and um what it, it it blends it blends the texture of the skin and makes it very even so as you brush it blends your texture and makes it very even that's that's what the mixer brush tool does so i mostly prefer to use my mixer brush tool than using the laser tool or the normal brush tool now when you select your mixer brush tool make sure you come and um select this turn this on and make sure this is empty like you select clean brush then your wet these are my go-to settings for mixer brush tool and make sure my wet is always at 30 then load is at 32 then mix doesn't really matter but then I prefer to leave it at 100 though it wouldn't make any difference and my flow normally ranges between 25 and 30 but this image i'll just go for 30. and yep then once that is done i would come and i'll mostly i zoom in my images i zoom them in very well then i begin to brush now if you want to get very good um texture you should take your time to brush your images do not rush to brush your images take your time to brush your images and when you're brushing make sure you don't brush into like um make sure when you're brushing you don't brush anyhow you don't, you don't brush how fastly now just try to brush in your shadows and brush in your highlights separately so you don't mix them just to maintain their um normal amount and so i'll just start brushing just like that so what happens is once you brush you might not see when you start brushing you might not see the difference it's gonna make you would think you're not doing anything but hey do not be discouraged <laughs> just continue brushing after a while you will just you toggle your um your layers on and off to check the progress you've done so um, as you can see I'm brushing and another thing about brushing is try as much as possible to brush according to your according to the direction of the, um, the skin the texture of the skin do not just brush anyhow as you can see it doesn't look as if I am um, doing anything but in a few minutes i would toggle my layers on and off just so you could see what i'm doing so this is what i would do now let me just toggle this on and off see the difference i will look at you could see the difference yep then i will continue well, this is going to take some time and so i think what i would do at this point is i will just speed up the video so that um by the time 
I'm done with this part. We we'll continue from the next part. So yep. Yeah. I'll take my time to um brush over this. Then I'll speed up the video and um, we'll take it up from there. So yep, um, welcome back, I'm done with my brushing and at this point what I'll do is I'll just put these two into a group just like this then when I toggle this group on and off because you can see the difference yeah. so yes this is how I do my um, frequency separation using the mixer brush too um and this is how most of the photographers do this is how um andre design does his frequency separation yep so if you want to do frequency separation i would advise you to first of all use the mixer brush tool if you're retouching a very close-up image or portrait make sure that your radius is set to about 10 or at least 8 if you want to maintain details if you set it lower than 10 you're gonna have this plastic like skin texture yep so um that's it for today's tutorial please do well to subscribe to my youtube channel um comment on this video tell me what you would have loved me to do but you did not get just leave it in the comment section i'll try my best to um, improve upon my next videos and subscribe we would be up i would be uploading more videos at least once in a week so that you guys would um see how i do my works and um follow me on instagram at eric underscore photography so you could um see some of my works Yep, thank you for watching today's tutorial. See you next time. Bye bye. Make you cry. I don't wanna fight with you.